welcome to the learners today we are going to discuss another important subject uh, that is called the, the salient features of the consumer protection act 2019 uh, we have so far um, recorded several lectures uh, by taking into each and every parts of the consumer protection act like what are the important definitions what is the consumer protection council what are the consumer dispute result commissions what is the central consumer protection authority what is mediation what is product liability on all these subjects we have made separate uh, say um, um, recordings also however the, uh, from the examination point of view sometimes the examiners they ask the, as a big questions for 20 marks or so what are the salient features of the consumer protection act keeping such type of uh, questions and the rec uh, demand and the purpose in mind we have made this uh, uh, presentation before you so this gives the complete gamut of the entire actual concern to begin with let us see what is the objectives of the consumer protection act 2019 there, there is not much a difference with the objective of the consumer protection act 1986 vis-a-vis -vis that of the act passed in the year 2019 so the, the primarily the act aims to for aims for the betterment of the interest of the consumers and the, the primary objective is to protect the interest of the consumers in all aspects and for this purpose that is for the protection of the consumer the law provided for creation and establishment of various institutional mechanisms they are known as national state and district consumer protection councils for deciding the policy matter one is a, one say this is the three tier structure national consumer protection council at the national level and the st at the state level it is called the district consumer protection council and the district level it is called district consumer protection council so primarily uh, these are three type structure and their primary job is to decide on policy matters related to the protection of the interest of the consumers so that is one of the purpose and objectives now but there is a second another mecha institutional mechanism created under the law that is called the central consumer protection authorities under the act and their job is primarily to carry out or undertake investigation about investigation about violation of the consumer rights or um, deviation from the regulation provided by concerned regulatory bodies or is there any offenses are committed any uh, say misleading advertisement is uh, say made to the public like on this the investigation has to be made then uh, the, for that for, for that purpose the institutional mechanism called central consumer protection authorities has been created and the third institutional mechanism provided under the law is establishment of national state and district level consumer commissions for the purpose of settlement of the disputes again we have the three tier structure at the national level national uh, dispute consumer redressal commission at the national level state level state consumer dispute redressal commission and the district level district consumer commission so these are the three tier mechanism so one is for the policy matter councils second one for the investigation purpose that is the authority and the third for the settlement of the disputes about the commission these are the three uh, mechanism provided and the institutional mechanism provided in the consumer tax concern and in addition to this the law for the first time brought in the council the mediation council provided for the say establishment of mediation council for the purpose of promoting mutual settlement among the bodies uh, between the parties primarily keep in with the large number of pendency of cases before the court of law the consumers are taking the not getting uh, record justice within a reasonable time therefore uh, the law provided for a, a mechanism um, to settle the to provide a platform for settlement of disputes by members of, by the uh, parties themselves so that's a new feature added in the 2019 act is concerned vis-a-vis the uh, 1986 act is concerned then another interesting important new feature added under that uh, act 2019 was initiation of the product liability action against that uh, product seller product manufacturer or service provider uh, there was no provision available in that 1986 act for initiation of product liability again action against the um, this, this type of manufacturer produce sellers and all but this is a new initiation that has been included in the law and another aspect is the offenses and penalties that is the law as uh, say identify what constitute offenses what are the penalties to provide it and all these are clearly codified uh, under the law is concerned though these are the broad objective of the uh, consumer protection act is, uh, is concerned now we slowly move into what are the other things salient features of the act is concerned what are the salient features and the, the salient features are to provide informal inexpensive and expeditious justice to the consumers who are affected by the uh, by the practice adopted by the traders 
and the service providers. Then also to promote and further the rights of the consumers by establishing consumer protection council at the national, state and district level. That's what we have discussed already that the, in the, for the purpose of prom promoting the in rights of the consumer policy is a um, um, advisory bodies are created at the national level, state level and the district level. We will discuss about a little later. Then also to establish three tier constitutional machinery about which I referred already. And this, this aspect I have already covered in the first slide itself. Now what are the remedies available or provided under the Consumer Protection Act against, uh, against the um, uh, consumers whose rights are affected? Number one, the remedies provided are against the consumer pro provided for to the aggrieved consumers are one is the, uh, the remedy or relief against the defective goods sold or defective goods purchased by the consumer. Then deficiency in services charging of excessive price, then adoption of unfair trade practices, then adoption of restrictive practices, then offer of hazardous goods for sale and loss suffered on account of negligence of manufacturers, suppliers and the sellers. Let me take very briefly. Now, this is the remedy available to the cons agreed consumer who purchased the goods, uh, presuming to be it's a good, assured that it's a quality good, but later on it turns out defective goods. So therefore, in such cases, uh, there is remedies available in the Consumer Protection Act. The very uh, the common example is now the sellers selling the old vehicle uh, as a new vehicle, as a new brand one by making necessary uh, changes in the vehicle or necessary modification, addition, outage and all. This is the one, one of the common defect in the goods noticed by the consumers in various aspects. So the consumer have been deceived of. They have been given the assurance that, that they will be getting the new piece of goods, but at the time when they purchase the goods, it turns out to be the old goods only. So this is in such tough cases when the old goods are sold in the form in, as a new uh, brand item goods and it is proved to be otherwise, then the consumer can have relief against the seller of that goods or the producer or manufacturer or the trader also. Then deficiency in services. Again, the deficiency in services. Services related to the several services like banking is a service. Uh, insurance is a service, electricity is a service, education is a service, medical service is a service, housing and house and house construction is a service. Likewise, you know, then travel, transportation, air travel, railway travel, travel by road, these are also covered under the services. Even our mobile operations, mobile uh, instruments, all those things, computer related, all those things are they are covered under the services. So, in the course of the availing the services, if the service provider yeah, say if you fail to provide the required service as promised or assured, then there will be a deficient service. The consumer can have a claim or relief against the consumer is concerned. Very simple example I can give you. If you have the fixed deposit in the bank and the fixed deposit has matured and you have a right to get the matured value of the fixed matured value of the fixed deposit on the date of the expiry of the complete period. Uh, where you approach the bank but the bank says that sorry we cannot release the matured value because you have some other, uh, you have some, we have some other claim against you which is not uh, which is uh, not related to this at all so failure on the part of the bank to release the matured value of the fixed deposit on the date of maturity definitely will amount to deficiency in service or locker the, the jewels you kept in the locker bank locker but when for when when you want to open the locker found out the MTB. So there is a deficit in service on the part of the bank concern because they promise that the jewel will be kept in the under safe locker and all. If that is, if there is a theft or whatever happens, if you um, um, lose your uh, vehicle, so jewels from the uh, uh, lockers, then that amount of deficiency in service, like insurance policies. Like, you know, when the insurance policy, uh, they assured you under on, on several things, you know, at the time taking a policy, but when it comes to the payment at the time of maturity, we have to undergo a lot of uh, harassment and hardships and also, that is also um, a deficiency in service. Like, uh, there are uh, different services and all, we have already discussed about this. Now, another one is the charging of excess prices. Very often the traders, the charge price more than the price say uh, printed in the, in the label or other fixed by the uh, concerned authorities concerns in such cases the charging of excess price is definitely a, a def it's a it's a, not come permitted under the Consumer Protection Act. In such cases, the, we can approach the court, then definitely we get, in, get relief 
for relief or repayment to the extent of the not only the excess price paid but also compensation uh, in the form of um, cost of litigation and other things also. So, levying excess price than the price ma, uh, determined or price um, uh, say um, quoted by the company or the dealer is concerned. Very often you know there is the rate quoted by the company is different than the retail and trader and all. However, if pricing is one you have the right to know the, what is the price of the commodity. If they charge you more than the price printed on the price list, then you are you, you have a right of a claim under the Consumer Protection Act concerned. Then action against unfair trade practices. Unfair trade practices again, it's a, a common uh, prevalence practice followed by the traders. I mean, trade practices are now which are fair trade practice means the, the trade practices which are permitted within the legal framework within the uh, uh, regulation rules and regulations. Unfair practice trade practice means a practice which is contrary to the provision of the trade practices provided under the law. Uh, the, the, so, that fall it is to unfair trade practices, you know, they, it, it, say alluring the people to say, purchase your commodity or making the people to believe that, you know, the product is genuine, whereas um, um, it is not a genuine product. So, they are it indulging in an uh, see, adulterated goods, sale of the adulterated goods is one of the unfair trade practices and also unfair trade practice added by the traders is definitely a, a cause of concern and the relief is available under the uh, Consumer Protection Act is concerned. Then also restitutive practice. Some traders by joining hands, you know, by mon mon oligopoly part of a formation, they restrict the trade practice. They restrict the trade practice. They adopt the restitute trade practices. Such practices, if it is um, um, say going to be cause loss of uh, loss or injury to the consumers, definitely such a practice can be challenged. We can have a remedy before the court of law. Then ag again, offer of the hazardous goods for sale. Hazardous goods. For, cannot be sold for the consumption for the common man for a sale or consumption also. So, if any person or any trader or a manufacturer they sell the hazardous goods which is not good for the health of the health of the common masses, if it is sold, then that is prohibited under the law. So, we can have relief or remedy under the Consumer Protection Act is concerned. Then the loss relief available, no? loss suffered on account of the negligence of manufacturers, suppliers and sellers. Sometimes because of the shutter negligence of the uh, manufacturer, suppliers and very, for example, no, in the case of perishable commodity that you know, uh, you, you, there is a time period is given say bread value period may be 4 to 5 days or milk maximum 3 days, 4 days only. Uh, likewise in the, the perishable commodities and, but if they sell the product like bread and the milk beyond that expiry period provided under the label is concerned then definitely it's a sheer negligence or even it can come as a, a unfair trade practice also it's a it can be also be treated as a sheer negligence on the part of the sell suppliers and sellers nay they should tell the consumers look here these are the outdated products so they should not keep it in the stall at all if they keep it then it's a will amount to a negligence on that part then we can have a remedy against such type of seller if they sell the outdated commodities to another. So, these are the uh, general remedies available under the Consumer Protection Act is concerned. Now, rights of the consumers concerned, we have uh, six rights of consumers. The right to safety, the right to be informed that the, uh, for the consumers, the right to choice, right to representation, right to redress self, then right to consumer education. These are the uh, six rights. Right to safety refers to the product sold should be at the Fulfill me direct the safety standards must be preserved and maintained by the seller or the producer or the manufacturer. And the right to inform of the right, consumer has the right to be informed. We talked about the price. The consumer has the right to be informed of the price, the quality, the quantity, the purity, the content. So we have the right to know whatever the contents, uh, all those things, are, whether the product contains the, all the yeah, say ingredients provided, say uh, prescribed by the regulatory authorities and all. So, we have the right to be informed on all those things and all. Right to choose, right to choice. You know, that um, we should have the um, so freedom to choose among various commodities of the different types of uh, uh, same commodity. We sh there should not be any monopoly. The trader should not, sometimes you know, you go to the shop, they insist you, madam, this is the, sir, this is the only product available, please take it. They will be having other as a commodity of the other brands also, but they have a tie-up arrangement with the seller or the trader. They will have some an arrangement for taking a higher margin of commission. So, they will not show the other related or the similar goods. They only for insist 
continuously the buyer to purchase one particular brand only so it is against the right of choice given to the consumers if they adopt such type practices definitely it will amount to unfair trade practices then right to representation as a consumer we have to represent in government bodies uh, as an individual or ngos also to for enforcement of their consumer rights we have we have the right to be represented in decision making bodies that's what the ngos consumer related organizations associated with the decision making so making bodies of the government the right to read result about which i referred about the the district commissions district consumer commission uh, state consumer commission national consumer commission be established primarily for the purpose of settlement of the uh, disputes and providing read result for the uh, aggrieved consumers concern then right to consumer education consumer education awareness the awareness about the consumer about their rights the people consumer should know about their rights Uh, so that is another right of the consumer education sir those uh, these are the six rights of the consumer which is elaborately provided in the consumer protection act is concerned then ambit of the coverage all supplies for in all these cases all the supplies of goods and services in all the private public and corporate and corporate sectors all are covered only there are some exemptions if the if the goods is sold or the services provided is uh, not uh, as per the market rate Uh, or it's not the adequate for price as per, uh, as per the market rate then perhaps we may not have that remedy from the uh, concerned uh, government bodies in all cases uh, for example you no know, a hospital which gives 100% free, free service to the, all the uh, say the uh, all the say patients come to the hospital and in the course of uh, providing free service by the hospital if some uh, some of the patients you know they uh, uh, undergo certain say inconvenience in such cases we may not be in a position to file a case under the consumer protection uh, act because the services are provided free of charge so any service rendered free of charge or any goods sold substantially at the lower rate then the prescribed market rate such cases may not be covered under the consumer protection act for example the goods sold through the fair price shops where the prices are comparatively lower than the price of a say fixed by the in the market situation so the, this type of things are concerned otherwise leaving it apart whether it's a public body or a private body or a corporate or a cooperative sector they all are covered under the consumer protection act is concerned now the another important which is no bar on other remedies the consumer protection in which it is the additional facility additional protection made available to the consumer so it is now in adi a consumer can have say remedy under the consumer protection law in addition to other facilities available in other laws and also the consumer will mean that the provisions of the act are in addition to and not in derogation of the provisions of any other law meaning thereby if the person has a enforcement of the civil right and the civil rights also infringes his consumer right then he can have the remedy for the infringement of consumer rights and the consumer protection law in addition to that he can have remedy remedy for the enforcement of the civil right under the civil uh, uh, under the um, civil code uh, under the civil procedure code also similarly an employee who is having the uh, your, your workman uh, who is covered under the say trade union act and industrial disputes acts then generally a uh, workman is covered under this however if the workman per se purchases the any item becomes a consumer then there is any grievances uh, say uh, uh, there is any uh, um say defect in the goods or defect in service rendered to him then that person despite being the workman covered under the industrial disputes act and the um, trade union act he can have the remedy under the consumer protection law for uh, for infringement of uh, his rights under the consumer protection uh, on account of purchase of goods or any of the services apart from that he can have his regular remedy as an employer uh, under the uh, industrial laws also so these are the, uh, the so in short in a nutshell um this is like a corporate an employee a member of the cooperative society a consumer cooperative is the best example a, mem- a member of the consumer cooperative society he can remedy with regard to his rights of the members under the cooperative society act uh, to by through the going to the cooperative court but if the same consumer
were a member of the cooperative society he purchased some commodity from the same consumer store then it becomes that then if there is a defective goods is sold by the consumer cooperative society then it will become the consumer related issue the same member despite being a member of the cooperative consumer cooperative he can have this remedy under the consumer protection law that is why it is said that the consumer protection is in addition to the uh, all other remedy available under no regular laws are concerned so so that is what the object, this is very very important provision is concerned consequently a consumer may still decide into a proceedings in civil court under the indian contract act or sale of goods even after coming into force of the consumer protection act now with this we are coming to the main body of the access concerned and now we already referred to the establishment of the consumer protection councils now as i said that the, there was a three stage mechanism three tier mechanism at the next level it is called the central consumer protection authority at the next level it is the chairperson the union minister of the ministry of consumer affairs he will be the chairperson there are 36 other members uh, who uh, constituting that uh, consumer protection count national consumer protection council is concerned then again it's a advisory body they are ad- they are only advisory nature their advices are not binding on the government is concerned similarly at the state level the state consumer protection council are established for each state and the con- the chairperson of the state con- the state minister for con- uh, consumer department he will be the chairperson of the t- state level committee uh, th- then again the membership number of members are provided and the act is concerned and the third tier at the district level district consumer protection council established the each district and the district collector will be the chairperson of this committee and they will meet regularly maybe once in a month or twice in a month or as required as for, uh, as number, number of times as required by the uh, by the body is concerned so the meeting can be called but a minimum of one meeting at the next level a minimum of two meetings at the state level and a minimum of uh, three meetings at the district level apart from that they can call any number of meetings any number of times subject to the requirement is concerned this is about the consumer protection their job is advisory nature they can advise only in the policy related matters now we'll come back to the central consumer protection authority is concerned it is a, as i said it's a investigation wing their job is only to investigate on the complaints received from the member from the consumers or from any other person the investigation there are again it's a three tier uh, structure at the national level there's a central consumer protection authority already established it is housed in the indian iipa indian institute of public at new delhi and they have appointed the director general and additional director generals have been appointed the the um, additional secretary in the ministry of consumer affairs is appointed the director general of this national consumer protection authority and there are two joint secretaries in the ministry of consumer affairs they have been appointed the additional director generals of the national consumer protection authorities they started functioning and their job is primarily to investigate on the complaint received based on the complaint received or suo moto based on the information received through newspapers media and other social media and all they can initiate action by themselves you know uh, they likewise in you know, a one such exam there uh, uh, the uh, national consumer protection that they notice that uh, some complaints have been uh, say this um, uh, say seen in the newspaper media that honey sold in the market is contaminated it is not pure it is adulterated and all by seeing the news in the newspaper and this thing the protection authority already the so motor took the decision could say collected the sample and sent it for investigation purpose to find out whether any sold in the market is whether pure or as per the standards prescribed the regulatory authority and regulatory authority and also they have the suo motor power also to initiate action in the interest of large interest of the public is concerned then the second level is the commissioner of the there is a second at the at the regional level the nation is divided into say, several regional levels based on certain criteria maybe it may be east south north west is north is not all maybe whatever the criteria but the regional officer regional so commissioner of regional officer created at the between the district level and the national level and it is so called the regional center is concerned again a person adg level or uh, jds level will be appointed there only again at the district level the investigation wing is uh, created there the district council the chairperson of that uh, district wing is concerned again uh, with regard to that um, uh, council and the uh, investigation wing their their functions are clearly demarcated their job is only to provide ad- uh, advisory uh, advice only here their job is to carry out the investigation based on the complaint received or based on the any other say so motor complaint and all then to carry out the investigation based on the complaint received that is the function of the central consumer protection authority is concerned we move to the third mechanism again 
the, about the consumer dispute redressal mechanism is created at the district level, state level, and the national level. Their primary job is to settle disputes uh, between the consumer and the seller of the goods or the uh, service provider and all. In the district level commission, you know, there is a, it is established by the state, uh, state government. In each, the state government is vested with the power to establish one district commission in each district. And in, in cases where there is a district very large, the state government is vested with the power to establish more than one district commission also within the same district. That power is also given to the uh, uh, this, uh, this, uh, state government. And the, there will be the members, the composition is concerned, there will be one president and not less than two members at least, and not more than number of person as per the law is called. Minimum one president and not less than two members, that's the minimum composition. And the, the state government is, uh, they, with the consult with the central government, they can enhance the uh, uh, numbers also. Then coming back to the jurisdiction, jurisdiction of the district commission is concerned, then there, uh, the jurisdiction definitely about the territorial jurisdiction one, then with respect to financial jurisdiction, any the goods of goods of value of the goods and services, if it's less than one crore, then the district commission is the appropriate first forum for, for to uh, say, uh, entertain the complaint. So for any for goods valued or the service values, if it's one crore or less than one crore, then the complaint has to be filed before the district consumer redressal commission only. Similarly. At the state level, again, the state government is vested with the power to establish the state consumer dispute commissions only. In some cases, uh, the state government, uh, generally they don't go for it, but uh, in the central government, in the smaller state, like, they have been vested with the power to constitute one state level commission for more than one state also, so northeastern states, like smaller states and all. Again, uh, the membership is concerned, uh, not less than four, so there will be one president. Then, not less than four members. In the district forum, one person generally will be the uh, judicial person. And uh, other than them, uh, only two members in the district commission. In the state level of the uh, state commission, this n n member is increased to from two to four. And the president, again, he will be the judicial person. Means either a person, a sitting judge of the high court or the retired judge of the Supreme Court, a person qualified to qualify to be the judge of the high court, he or she will be appointed as the chair president of the state commission. With respect to the district commission, a person sitting judge of the district court or person retired as the uh, judge of the district court, a person qualified to be the judge of the district court, he or she can be appointed as the president only. So, judicial member. These are the other than the members. And the pecuniary financial where jurisdiction of the state commission is concerned, if the value of the goods ranges between 1 crore to 10 crore, then the, we have to file the case before the state consumer redressal commission uh, only, not uh, at the district level, not at the national level also. Uh, this is about the uh, state consumer dispute redressal is concerned. And the National Consumer Dispute Redressal Commission, again at the national level, the central government is vested with the power to establish the um, 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 National Consumer Dispute Commission. In addition to this, the central government is also vested with the power to establish regional branches of the uh, National Commission, like uh, we have the benches of the High Courts and Supreme Court. Analogous to that, National Commission have its own uh, regional benches at different places, depending on the need and requirement. But the central government is vested with the power to appoint the National Commission as well as the benches of this commission is concerned. Then now we are again the composition, there will be the one president, the one president, again the president will be either the sitting judge of the Supreme Court or retired judge of the Supreme Court a pers or a person qualified to be the judge of the Supreme Court. Generally the person qualified to be the judge means, you know, a person who has put in a minimum of 10 years in the uh, practice in the concerned court. He or she, he or she is qualified to become the judge of the consent court. Also, that's what a, a person qualified to be the judge of a judge of the Supreme Court or the High Court or the District Court, as the case may. In addition to this, not less than four members again, but the uh, central government has the power to increase the number to any number depending upon the need is concerned. Coming back the territorial jurisdiction again, if the value of goods uh, uh, purchased or if the service side is range is beyond. 10 crores, 
then the case has to be filed as the first instance before the national commission only coming back to this and there are uh, two types of jurisdictions one is the original jurisdiction another appellate jurisdiction or app appellate jurisdiction in the case of district commission there is no provision for the appellate jurisdiction appellate jurisdiction means which means that when a competent court has given its decision or a verdict and if the decision is not to the satisfaction of the aggrieved person, then the aggrieved person has the right to go on appeal or prefer an appeal against the judgment of the particular court, in this case, district forum. So therefore, uh, in the case, the state, state commission will have the original jurisdiction up to 10 crores. Or in addition to that, the state commission will have the appellate jurisdiction over the decision given by the state commission also. Similarly, the national commission will have the original jurisdiction up to the value of 10 crores of goods purchased or services hired. In addition to that, they will all the jurisdiction to decide matters on the uh, cases appeal received based on the decision given by the state commission also. This is about the composition, jurisdiction and the constitution of the consumer commissions and all. We will move into the next aspect is concerned mediation. Uh, mediation again we have the separate c c lecture on video, you can watch that. Very briefly, mediation of process wherein a, pl a platform is created for the benefit of the agreed persons uh, to come together in a common platform for the purpose of say ventilating their own um, views, grievances and also that a common uh, atmosphere is created, a conducive environment created for the parties come together, sit together and take a decision, arrive at a conclusion on the uh, issue of the dispute is concerned. So it's a process where a person, third party, he will be uh, sitting as an umpire between this uh, this uh, complainant and the, the person against whom the complaint is made, they will be sitting and they give the media in the presence of the mediator. Uh, the, is called the umpire is called the mediator. The advantages of mediation is like the the problem faced with the consumers through the long delay in the, before the court of law, waiting for a longer time and the uncertainty over getting the uh, time to decisions all. These things will be curtailed. So in the mediation process, the party agreeing on these issues, they can immediately uh, say give it in writing to the mediator, then that will be given to the court, consumer court concerned, then immediately order will be passed based on the agreement reached by the party's concern, so through the mediation process. Then the process, the reception all, uh, the process involves first one, number one, if the parties agree on all the issues, uh, say, uh, raised in the complaint, then the, register, the mediator has to prepare a complete report and um, success report and is given to the consumer commission for passing the order. Then second situation is where the parties may not agree, suppose um, on all the issues, they may partly agree on some of the issues, they partly disagree on the, some other issues. So in such cases, the mediator will prepare a part, uh, part reports about the, he will issue, list out issues on which agreement has, or consensus has reached and the issues on which the consensus have not been reached. This report he will submit to the com this um, uh, uh, concerned commission and thereafter the commission will keep it aside the issues on which the concerns have been arrived, then it will take only on those issues where the concerns have not been reached, then the further person will initiate for the settlement of the uh, dispute through, this, um, um, uh, the, through the commission's mechanism and all. So settlement through mediation means then based on the mediator's report, the court will pass an appropriate order recording the settlement. That is what we have talked about. Then we have the product liability. As I said, the law provided for initiating liability against the product manufacturer service provider and the product sellers. Exceptions are that, that we will not look into. Then coming the offenses and penalties, the law provided for the penalty for non compliance in the district or direction of the central authority, punishment for false or misleading advertisement, punishment for manufacturing for sale or storing or selling or distributing or importing of products containing adulterant, punishment for manufacturing for sale or storing, selling or distributing or importing spurious goods or cognizance happens by the court also, then vexatious search and seizure and all made and all. So these are the type of major offenses and penalty provisions. With this, uh, we conclude this uh, presentation on the salient features of the consumer protection concern. I'll request you please read the material provided by all uh, carefully and you may benefit out of this. Thank you very much for all of you, please. Thank you very much.